Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, Parallel Deku, back with another fanfiction. This is the movie of, what if Deku was a part of Civil War? Now before starting, please give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Class 1A Civil War, Declaration of War. Final exams were around the corner now. Students from different levels from across different departments within UUE Academy were growing anxious as the days roll past and the test grew near, none more so than the Class 1A. Especially now that Aizawa Sensei will finally reveal what kind of practical exam they will be having hopefully. I couldn't help but fidget in my seat in anticipation. Eyes up front where Aizawa Sensei continued to drone on about what to expect from the written portion of the exams. Even though the written portion makes up half your final exam score it wasn't what made me anxious or restless however, I was fairly confident when it come to my academics. As I figured that Sensei might drone on for a while, my mind began to wander trying to figure out what kind of practical exam we would have. I thought about what we had learned and maybe find hints to what we would be doing. I recalled the final exam last semester was about shining a light on our psychological weaknesses and pushing past them. Those ranged from self-esteem issues like Todoroki and Yeirazu to narrow-mindedness of Kaminari and Ashido to even cooperation issues like mine and Kaken. That covers all of what to expect from the written exams, Aizawa stated snapping me from my inner thoughts. Now my full attention was now on our homeroom teacher, it wasn't mine alone. Everyone in class was now solely focused on the man up front if he was willing to say anything with regards to the practical portion of the exams. As if sensing the expectations of class, Aizawa Sensei could only sigh in annoyance before giving in. I will now tell you all about the practical portion of the final exam. We almost leap out of joy, key word being almost cause immediately he sent the entire class a cold glare that even sent shivers down Todoroki's spine. I should know cause we all did. Midori Izuku and Bakugou Katsuki, front and center. He called out, drawing Kaken in my attention. I glance at Kaken's direction to gauge his reaction only for him to silently stand and made his way up front I followed soon after. I stand to Sensei's left while Kaken stood at his right. I couldn't help but be restless as the rest of the class eyed both of us, I could even sense the questions forming in their head. The practical exam will be a battle between villains and heroes. A call back to your first exercise with all might. Sensei began, writing it down on the blackboard behind us. Villain team will be led by Midoriya while hero team will be led by Bakugou. That caught me by surprise but it wasn't just me. Sensei are you sure it not the other way around? Hiroshima and Pipin with a snigger much to the irritation of the explosive quirk user though miraculously he didn't bite back. The faculty and staff had decided their roles. As for the division for the rest of the class, it is entirely up to you which side you choose as long as one side has at least two people it's free game. Sensei explained, you must choose not to avoid leaders influencing your choices at a later time. They got me and the entire class riled up and excited. There were excited discussion between my classmates and I couldn't help but wonder who would join me. Sensei I would like to join Hero's side Kirishima was the first to decide joining Kaken on Sensei's right side. He was soon followed by Kaminari as well. Both were understandably joining Kaken's side since they were his closest friends in class despite the denials he would roar every so often that it would be brought up. What surprised me and saddened me was the next two who chose sides. Ida and Yuraka. Sensei yuraka and I choose to join the hero team Ida announced as boisterous as ever. The words catching me and the rest of the class by surprise. Though, for a moment there I thought you two would join the villain team, what made you think otherwise? Aizawa Sensei asked surprise evident on his bored tone. To be honest Sensei, I wanted to fight against Midori Kun again after the sports festival. As a friend and a person who was helped by him, I had learned a lot but this time I want to learn from him not as someone by his side but as someone who will fight against him. The resolve in Edakun's voice was prevalent and clear and I couldn't help but nod and smile at his direction which he returned in kind. I as well Yuraka declared with a firmer tone that I had to double take if it was truly Yuraka. Gekukun had been helpful as a friend that I too wanted to see and learn from him as an enemy. And I wanted to keep my promise back during the sports festival to fight against Gekukun. Very well. You can join Hero Team. Thank you Aizawa Sensei. What's this Deku? Even your friends aren't going to join you it really shows that you really are weak Kaken taunted which actually caught me off guard since I was stunned by what they had said. It was kind of funny when both Ida and Yuraka gave him a dirty look which eased my worries about them abandoning me. What kind of friends are you? Friends needs to stick together am I right? Mina spoke up as he made his way up front which was followed by Tsuyu, both of whom stood by my side. Sensei we will be joining the villain team. Mina and Tsuyu I promised all might I wouldn't cry I promised. I got your back Midori Akun I promised. I am repaying my debt to you Midoriya kun I'm not crying. Oh I don't cry on me Midoriya. Damn it. Zero. Soon after my classmates one by one decided to join side. Takoyami, Sato, Ajiro, Ayama, and Hagakure joining Kaken while Ashido, Koda, Siro, and Shouji joining my team. Leaving only Jiro, Yeirazu, and Todoroki undecided not for long thought. I'm joining the hero team, Sensei. Todoroki announced as he made his way down towards the right ignoring the glare Kaken was giving him. This is the perfect opportunity for me to pay Midoriya back by becoming his enemy even if I have to align with Bakugou. 
What was that Scarface? Wanna fight me? No, after all we all have the common enemy I rather we work together for that. TCH, as long as you don't get in my way. Likewise, I had to hold down a laugh as I watched the two bicker but the rest of the class could only sweat drop at the current predicament of the hero team. Will they be okay? I heard Mida ask to no one in particular and no one was keen on answering that question. I've seen personalities clash but this was taking the cake by far. But I could definitely say that there is camaraderie in them that they don't realize the only problem was it was aimed at him. I will join the villain team Yeirazu declared making her way towards the front only to hesitate when Gyro didn't make a move. Then I will join the hero team Gyro said making her own way on the other side. What? Apparently her action caught Yeirazu by surprise. Sorry, Momo but just like the rest I too want to beat someone and that is you I want to test out what I can do against you and learn and grow from this experience. It took a moment or two before Yeirazu replied but it wasn't with words. It was a nod and smile like what I did with Ida and Yuraka. Words would be diluted. Speaking would weaken resolve. Actions need to be taken. They showed more. With this class 1A has been divided. Sensei announced as he wrote the last name on the board. I took a glance at it and read the group up. Hero Team, 12. Lead, Bakugu. Vice, Todoroki. Members, Kirishima, Kaminari, Ida, Yuraka, Takoyami, Sato, Ajiro, Ayama, Hagakure, and Gyro. Villain Team, 8. Lead, Midoriya. Vice, Yeyazuru. Members, Asui, Minta, Ishido, Koda, Siro, and Shouji. Looking at the lineup I realized we were outnumbered and outmatched but that doesn't mean we were going to lose that easily. What we lack in power we had more ways to make up for it with utility and flexibility within the group. Before I dismiss this class I would like Midoriya and Yeyazuru to follow me to the faculty office. That is all, Aizawa said dismissively before walking out the door. I look at my Yeyurazu wondering if she had an idea why we were called. She shook her head, apparently her guess was good as mine. We followed soon after when then noise started back up inside the classroom when Minda taunted Ida and soon devolve into a round of taunts and insults I just hope they won't go overboard with this. Zero. You're here Midoriya boy I heard the all too familiar voice of All Might as I entered the one of the rooms used by the faculty when they meet with guests or students alike. It wasn't just All Might and Aizawa sensei waiting for us, Principal Nedzu and Midnight sensei was there as well. So the villains had finally come the bear, Mouse Principal exclaimed too excitedly for me, the words made me flinch given how much I had gotten involved with villains I never thought that word would be associated with me even in a simulation. Whoop sorry got too carried away there he immediately apologized, apparently it was evident not just on my face but on my classmate as well. With this we can finally start our discussion. Discussion. I asked to no one in particular confused as to what the principal was talking about. A villain's objectives. Aizawa answered straight as always. You learn this during heroics class that a villain have different objectives. They range from terrorism to simple mugging. We are here to discuss those objectives as well as other details. With that said I shall now present to you your objectives as a villain's this time it was Midnight Sensei that chirp in handing us a sheet of paper. With a small thank you I accepted it and began reading the details my vice also started reading the moment she receives her own paper. As I continued to read through our objective each one as simple as the next but what caught my interest was the final and last objective which had only one word. Escape. Yes, at the end of the day the last and most important of all objective of a villain is to escape capture regardless of what happens to the rest of the objectives. Principal Nedzu explained while pacing back and forth. This is the essential for both heroes and villain and whether the latter will cause havoc another day or be sent behind bars, but but there are conditions for your escape first off is only escape when all of the other objectives are lost or when other members of your team have been disabled or captured. Second is that for escape to be successful either one of you must reach the exit or both of you reach the exit. Escape won't be successful if any other members exit without you. Which means I hesitated fully knowing what the answer was to come after all I saw at first hand a couple of times already. It means Yumitori Ashunin and Yuyayurazu Shoujo are the only one capable of using escape. You both should know that no matter if a pawn's escape, the moment the king or queen is captured it would already mean you lost. That's why as villains it is imperative that the king must survive if not the one that carries its will. You both know full well what happened in Kamino Ward. We both wince, it was still a sore spot for us who was there to talk about the events that transpired there. Your objective excluding escape and other detail will be revealed to the hero team. It is within your discretion if you are willing to share all of this to your teammates or just as selective as the council eyes away sensei said drearily. Now for the other details. Yes of course Principal Nedzu nodded his excitement returning before he turned to address us students. Who else do you want to join? I have a few names in mind. The silence was thick. It was heavy. It showed how serious the situation really is. It showed how serious facing Izuku Deku Midoriya really is. It had been an hour since Aizawa Sensei declared that the classroom would now be used by the villain team at the end of the afternoon classes starting today until the end of the practical exams which was a week and a half away. Some tried to protest only to be silenced by Sensei's glare that in the paper signed and sealed by the principal himself declaring that Class 1A will be used by the villain team until the practical ends. 
To our surprise, Bakugo didn't even once protest it and instead requested that the dorm lounge shall be used by the hero team until they are finished and must send a message if they are coming back. Sensei and Midoriya agreed to the terms. When everything was said and done, Bakugo once again surprised there when he announces that they would meet after 30 minutes to give us time to dress and head back to the lounge for their own meeting. Although there were curse in between but was less prevalent than it usually was. The moment they all returned to the dorm they parted ways to get dressed and prepare themselves. Everyone had arrived 30 minutes ago yet everybody was still silent, unsure how to approach these meetings. That is until the explosion quirk user began. Listen here you munchkins cause I'm going to say this only once. Take this seriously or leave. Bakugo declared with a growl leveling everyone with a glare. None argued. No one dared argued. I agree, if we take this with a half-hearted approach only failure will meet us. Midoriya Kun will be facing us with everything he got. It is expected that we all do the same. Todoroki added in his own thoughts on the matter. It was rare that both agreed even rarer that they never once bickered with one another during the last hour. The thought of fighting Deku was a what connected the two no it connected all of them. Midoriya's quirk is strong but that isn't what make him scary he had trailed, remembering the times where he felt Midoriya's eyes on him. Eyes that was seeing through his very being as if his entire self was put under a microscope and was dissected and analyzed like some lab experiment. It sent shivers down his spine. It's how he looks at us when he watches us using our quirks, isn't it? It was Kirishima that guessed the nod he got was pretty much affirmed what he thought also. I know it was his hobby since his childhood but sometimes I wonder if it's his quirk and not that strength enhancement he shows. I once saw one of his hero journals before the training camp. Uraraka said drawing everyone's attention. It was a page about me. The details he wrote was scary. His hypothesis on how my quirk works, what limits I could reach, my strengths, weaknesses, and even my habits I wasn't even aware of until he showed it to me. She paused trying to recollect her thoughts. At that time I thought that he was impressive. It was admirable really on how dedicated to heroes he is, but now it makes me fearful facing him. Looking at it now those creepy muttering of his really is him analyzing the things he see and breaking it down. That's scary on another level. Kaminari added remembering the times he laughs at the way Midoriya was muttering while ignoring the world around it was funny. Now those muttering is what made him scary. Not to mention his quirk. Super strength to point of breaking your own bones man that's harsh. 5% Bakugu muttered drawing everyone's attention all on him. 5% is what how much he can draw out without his bones breaking no, the bastard maybe can draw more than 10% now. What do you mean 10% Bakugu? Sato asked curious what the explosive user was on about. Deku's quirk. As he is now he can draw out at most 10% without any serious injuries. Bakugu answered avoiding any major details about all for one. Enough about that, we can deal against Deku with ease. I'm more interested on those who sided with that hero Otaku. Let's start with his vice. Momo Yayurazu's quirk allows her to create anything using her body. Todoroki answered. As long as she know what she's making and its properties she could make it. The one woman production line. No treat alone but with Deku's knowledge Bakugu grimace, one of the rare occasions he did. The thought was scary. That was a match made in heaven or in their situation, their worst nightmare. If I recalled short stack and flat face had quirks designed for capture and restrain. Yep, Ciro's quirk allows him to shoot out tape from his elbows while Mindus has those sticky balls of his. Gyro supplied. Ashidasen mentioned that she was also experimenting on an adhesive type of acid. I don't know if she had succeeded on doing so yet. And there is also Asui, Kota and Shouji all of which could specialized in scouting with their quirks. That or hit and run tactics. Takoyami voice out. Looking at their lineup much more clearly, they are quite well-rounded. Well-rounded or not it won't matter once we beat them. Bakugu proclaimed with a smug grin. And I got a plan. So listen up you munchkins. It was rough around the edges but it was a start plan alpha has been formed. Zero. It was two hours into the discussion when their phones rang and was notified that the villain team were done with their own meeting and are coming back to the dorms. It was their cue to finish their own meeting before they arrive. With a plan formed they called the meeting to a close. When the doors to the dorm open it revealed the pale faces Minda and Kota which were followed by the rest of the VT. It unnerved them when Minda couldn't stop muttering about Midoriya. Journal and frightening followed by the rest of them being thankful that Midoriya was a hero rather than a villain. They all were thankful for that. Where's Dekikon and Yeamamasen? Yuraka asked noticing her friend's absence. Oh they went to the principal's office to ask some details for the practical exam. Ashido chirped with a teasing grin. Is someone jealous? Why? No I am not Yuraka denied before floating away in a red flustered mess. Zero. So this are the student you want to join you during the practical. Principal Nedzu asked looking at the list of student, seven names were listed. Four of which were part of UA while the other three came from different schools. While this isn't surprising given our agreement on help especially the first four names but color me impressed that you want other student from different schools to join in on our little exams. While I do have the connections and power to contact them it is still up to you to convince them join your cause. Do you understand? Yes Principal Nedzu. Just for the sake of curiosity. Why did you choose the seven students? Trump cards. Interesting. To be continued. Short one this chapter sadly but never fear I have an amic and a sample as to what I have been doing. So have a taste of my own version of Papa Deku. 
I'll make corner. I could only gulp in nervousness as twenty pair of eyes are glued onto my form. The attention was too much for me as I tried to look away from them. It didn't help that the person who was introducing me was over-exaggerating it. This young man here is an alumnus of Yue Tashinori Yagi or more commonly known as All Might boisterously announce. A hero even I respect and even admire. Oh god no. Is not doing this again I could feel my face blush bright red. Yajison. Not in front of them please M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A-I-Z-U-K-U. H hello I stuttered no thanks to the enthusiastic intro done by my friend. It also didn't help that their eyes began to sparkle in admiration. Though the part where all might admire me is kinda exaggerated, it is true I studied at UA with them. I corrected while scratching the back of my head in embarrassment no thanks to the number one hero. Ohoh oh, I hear someone called out and saw a floating glow waving energetically, Hagakure Toru I recalled. What kind of quirk do you have Midori sensei I heard her ask and my blush went a deeper shade of red when I heard her say sensei. It was kinda heartwarming to be called such honorifics. I'm actually quirkless I answered truthfully. The near instantaneous silence that followed was expected when people heard that a hero such as me was quirkless. What? I couldn't help but chuckle at their almost comical surprise. The following flood of questions made me laugh even harder. I didn't miss the other teacher's smile and smirk in Aizawa's case. Calm down, students. Let Izuku can finish Nimiri Kayama or Midnight to the public settled the rather surprised class of heroes. Thank you KMS and I smiled at her as the class finally settled. I didn't miss the tint of red showing when I turned to her. She must be catching a cold. Winter is around the corner after all and her hero outfit really doesn't suit well with the cold. Truthfully I was initially part of UAS regular course but was transferred to the heroics department after the sports festival. But that's a story for another time the disappointing noise they made was kinda cute then again there were more loose mouthed among them swearing which I rightfully ignored. Now, I am sure that Eiswasson and the rest may have explained this to you but let me explain it again. I started changing the topic away from my status as a quirkless hero in my past. As you all know heroes can't save everybody, such truth hurts but we must learn to accept that. Natural calamities, terrorism, and rampaging villains this are but a few of what heroes face in the real world. As much as possible we minimize casualties in this incident or avoid it at all. Those casualties would be broken physically and, or emotionally, as heroes we also lend a helping hand to them as they begin to heal and learn to stand once more on their own two feet. I pause as I look at the next generation heroes. Today here at UA Foundation Orphanage, I will teach you how to help those victims heal. I gestured towards the door behind me and continued behind this door are children who lost their parents to calamities, abandoned or even they themselves are victims of the grasp of villains. The first step into healing them of such scars is to be their light and the hero. I pause and couldn't but show a pleased smile to the UA Class 1A. They weren't ready for what is to come. Go play with them. And like a floodgate, the doors open and small blurs suddenly surge forward towards the unprepared students before they could react they were dragged back inside the door and into the mercy of dangerous creatures known children. Have fun I barely managed to cheer as the door closed again and the only one left outside are Aizawa, Kayama and I had even all might got dragged by the kids. You're scary sometimes Midoriya. I think we established that since our UA days Aizawa. Zero. It had been a good 30 minutes before All Might joined us, somehow able to escape the grasp of the small children. I had prepared some tea and snack for the students knowing that the children have them for the whole entire afternoon. It brought a small smile to me when I snuck a glass at the room and saw that the children had been divided into groups by the different students. Yuraka Achako was entertaining them by floating small toy into the air, Koji Kota had somehow talked to the birds and were flying in circles above the children. Although those were the more adaptable students in the class which also include Momo Yayazuru, and surprisingly Shado Todoroki who was creating ice sculptures and even a slide made of ice. The rowdier bunch were gathered by the more boisterous hero to be like Katsuki Bakugu, Denki Kaminari and Ijiro Kurishima. I also saw a small group gathered around Minoru Minda. From what I heard from Aizawa, the small guy was a huge pervert. I fear that the person was corrupting the children only to notice that he was being kept in check by Tsuyu Asui and were doing a comedy gag somewhat. What worried me more was the group of students who were just standing around who includes Tenya Ida and Riki Asato. The looks they gave were of confusion and lost on what to actually do. I was tempted to lend them a hand and give them advice but remembered that they need to learn this on their own. I also remembered a saying from one of my mentors back then, stating that not all quirks are suited for certain situations, it's the hero's job to find a way to work around that. Satisfied with how things are I made my way back to my office where All Might and the rest are waiting. When I entered the office I was in for a peculiar sight. All Might was holding back midnight while Eraserhead is carrying a small blonde child with a horn on her right side of the forehead who was glaring at midnight. Who did I miss something? I asked to no one in particular looking back and forth between the two sides. The brat called me old midnight growl trying and failing to break free from the symbol of peace. Let me go Tashinori, I'm just going to teach this brat not to call women old. Calm down midnight it's just a child Yagi was struggling to keep the plus 18 hero at bay which was kinda amusing and amazing at the same time. Midoriya my man a little help would be appreciated right about now. Oh right, you guys haven't met yet. I said as I took the small girl from Aizawa, which the elicited a small squeal from the child. 
Midnight meet my daughter, Remidoria. The moment I said those words, Midnight suddenly became slack in All Might's arms and became quite much to the relief of Yagi, but he wasn't prepared for what came next. You're married. What? No, I was actually caught by surprise by that. What made you think that? Is it Pixie Bob? She accused. What got this to do with Tsuchikawasan? Mount Lady then. I haven't met Takumasan in a long while. Then she was cut short by a small chop by Aizawa who was getting annoyed by her antics. I also notice her cute pout at the end of it. I just pray that such face will only stay between us four friends. I don't know what would happen if her fans would know that Midnight could pull such a face. I'd rather not imagine it. Calm down Kayama. Let the guy finish. Thanks Aizawa, let me rephrase what I said. Kiri is my adopted daughter. Remember that time when Aizawa and Toshinori raided that Yakuza hideout. I saw her nod. She is the girl they save and became correctless after the incident. She kinda grew on me and I on her. I paused as I ruffled the small girl's head, I couldn't stop the small smile that showed on my face. So I adopted her and became my daughter I finished and glazed back at my sadistic friend only to see her tearing up. Oh right, I forgot that she also tend to be emotional. Such heartwarming story, Midoriya you are truly a hero. She said in between sobs. I know right. All Might agreed who was also tearing up. Heck I even noticed Aizawa wipe a tear away. I was considering how emotional they are being from my story and I'm the most emotional of them all. So you're not married. Who would even marry me? Meanwhile at the Forest of Magic Beast. Three women suddenly sneeze and wondered who was talking about them bar tiger. Meanwhile on the streets of Tokyo. Mount Lady suddenly sneeze and wondered if she should modify her costume for the oncoming cold. Meanwhile inside Night Eye's office. Ryukyu and Bubble Girl sneeze and wondered who was thinking of them. Zero. Later that day the Izuku Harim plan went live. Class A, Civil War. Villain side, Recruitment Drive. So what does the pompous 1A want from us Class B? Lanama started with his usual attitude when it comes to our class. Thankfully Itsuka was there as well to rein him in. It was the day after the class divide following the reveal from Aizawa sensei With how the divide was split 12 to 8 we were in need of reinforcements. Thankfully Principal Nedzu allowed the villain team to recruit other students outside of class and maybe even outside of the school as long as the individuals in question accepts and is willing to help. With that knowledge the most of yesterday's meet went into thinking on who to recruit and how to recruit them to our side. There were names thrown around between all of us present they ranged from former classmates back in middle school to our seniors and even teachers. At the end of it all we came up with seven names. Now it was just a matter of convincing them to join us. I just hope we succeed. We want you to join us in the upcoming practical test. Yeyarazu started without batting an eye her focus was with the other person at the table, Itsufa Kendu class president of 1B. And what do we get if we join you? H.M. Monoma started with a smug look on his face, I could sense him taunting us soon. From what I heard you guys are facing quite a nasty lineup even then you are outnumbered. If I wanted to see you on your knees I would rather join the winning side the guy was cut short when a large hand smacked him upside the head before hitting his head on the table. We aren't exactly in a great position ourselves. Now that caught our attention. I raised my eyebrow with peak interest as to why Kendu said those words. What do you mean Kendousen? Monoma here taunted the rest of the class into joining the hero team. If it weren't for Tetsutesu convincing them to join us we would be going against the entire class by ourselves. How exactly is class B divided? 4 against 16. Why? Why? Yeyurazu voiced what I had in mind. How did he taunt almost everyone in class to go against him? Then again the guy liked to rile up our class as well. It's a long story and one I'd rather not talk about. That was understandable given that I could guess what really went down and how he was able to rile them up against him. That was why we needed Monoma for our team, it wasn't just for his quirk but also his uncanny ability to get under someone's skin. We also needed Kendu as the only person we knew who can rein the guy in and avoid any unnecessary conflict within the group. Then we would like to offer our help in exchange for yours. I offered getting to the point of why we're here in the first place. I cannot say for the rest of my team but I and Ye Yorazusen are willing to aid you during your own practical exams. It wasn't exactly an offer they could refuse but it was a start. While we too had a discussion about who to recruit as well between the two of you, only Ye Yorazusen was someone we considered Midoriya-kun. While your quirk is indeed powerful, the drawback isn't exactly something we could ignore. Kendu honestly said, it was understandable why they didn't want me to join in, thankfully it was within my expectations. What they needed now was versatility and stable power, my quirk is versatile and powerful but the real issue was how stable it was. The moments class B saw me use my quirks are far and in between and each time they saw me use it, I was in taters afterwards. What they didn't know is that I wasn't just offering my quirk. In the outside world information is key and I intend to use that knowledge to my full advantage. I pulled out a notebook within my bag and showed it to them. That caught their attention. Hero Journal, Class 1B. What this all about Midoriyasen? Kendu asked curious and nervous at the same time. I really can't blame them. That there is the compiled profile of students within Class 1B. Each student has a page or two dedicated to them. Written there is all the observation I noted for each one of you from your quirks, limitations, weaknesses and strengths, even snippets of habits and ticks you do consciously or unconsciously I explained as I watched Kendu flip through the pages, her face progressively going paler by each turn. 
How? I have eyes Kendelson. I watch, I observe, commit to memory and write it down. I managed to bit back a stutter. It was at these moments that I must not falter. Show a sign of weakness and opening you may lose it all. I've been doing this for the past twelve years. I have confidence that most if not all are the truth. It was time to offer her something she couldn't refuse, which anyone couldn't simply refuse. If you join us, this journal will be yours to keep in use as you see fit. Even better I am willing to help you and teach you everything within this journal. They were silent, even Monoma was silent, it wasn't that often a hero blackmails another hero with secrets. But at that moment, they weren't heroes they were villains and right now I, Izuku Midoriya was playing that part. It left a dark pit within his guts, even Yeyazaru's as well but this was part and parcel of the practical test. Principal Nedzu said it himself, if one must play the villain, then one must think like a villain. And right now this is what villains do to gain resources, pieces, and pawns. Very well. I accept, Midoriya-san. Kendu accepted albeit with a slight hesitation as she pocketed the journal. The moment she said those words it lifted a small weight of me. Two down, five more to go. Actually Yeyurazu started shyly raising her hand to garner our attention. Why not both our class have the practical test at the same time and place? She suggested. That made me pause as a new possibility opened before me. Aizawa Sensei did say as long as we comply with the guidelines they gave us anything else is free game as long as they notify the faculty about it and have it approve. There are disadvantages of course one of which was numbers fighting the combined might of class A and B would be problematic but that is if they are aware they are on the same team to begin with. Is that even possible? Kendu asked. It isn't that common in the real world but there are times where two separate hero teams have to detain a group of villains for different reasons even rarer are when they won't notify one or the other that they are chasing the same person or group. Those situations tend to cause miscommunication which are often exploited by villains. I explained recalling events and news reels detailing those events that lead to quite a mess. It was an idea, one that isn't easily be discarded. I was sure that Kekin and the rest are all planning how to counter me at the moment so our class B against Kendu and Monoma. A plan formed within my head. But it hinges on the fact that neither class was aware of this collaboration. It was a long shot that needed a Hail Mary to pull off but it was better than nothing. If you are both willing to do this then I too would like to have this alliance. So what do you say? I asked extending my hand waiting for either of them to reach out and accept. They returned in kind. Zero. Yay Yorazusen are you sure about this? I asked concern for my vice captain. While convincing class B to join us wasn't easy it wasn't that hard to begin with unlike the next person on the list. For the last time Midori Kun, I'm sure. You were willing to let go one of your precious journals for this. It's a given that I as your vice must as well be willing to give something for us to succeed. She reassured with a small smile. To be honest it was rare for me to see her smile like that, the confidence in her action was proof that she has grown and recovered from her self-esteem issues during the first term. I just nodded as we reach our destination power loader sensei's workshop. I stop her short of the door knowing firsthand that at any moment those doors would explode. I continued to walk while gesturing to Yeyorazusen to stay where she is. Once I reach the doors I slowly brace myself expecting the door to fly off its hinges at any moment and as expected it did with a loud explosion no less. M-I-D-O-R-I-Y I heard my classmate shouted among the ringing in my ear. I tried to call out that I was fine but it was hard to breathe, apparently something or someone was on top of me. I'll be honest with you Hatsum it takes a special person to make adhesive explode. Power Loader Sensei said in between cough as his figure emerged from the dust cloud. Ah, I think I mixed the wrong chemicals with that when I think I put nitroglycerin. A female voice explained, her voice much closer and as I turned to the body atop my own I realized who it was. Mei Hatsum, well at least she was sitting atop me rather than laying down. Still doesn't stop me from turning into a blushing mess or the compromising position we're in. Hatsum S and I called out squirming underneath her trying to pry myself off, I wasn't even budging. Oh Midori Akan, fancy meeting you here she chirps nonchalantly as if this was a regular thing to happen to her. Then again every time I meet her here it usually is started with an explosion from a failed product. What can I do for you today? Get off of him first power loader sensei scold trying to swat her away from me. No violence she dodges while removing herself off me. Finally I could breathe easy in more ways than one. Are you okay Midori Akan? My vice asked in concern already pulling a roll of bandages from her arm. I'm fine, this is just how it is when I come here. I laugh at her perplexed expression apparently she doesn't believe me then again who would. So Midori I take your here to recruit this brat into your little group. I heard the excavation hero and turned to him and forced myself not to laugh at the sight even Yeyurazu was holding it in, he has Hatsum in his claws by the scruff of her tracksuit. It was cute, reminded me of Kitten being dragged around by its parent. Yes sir, good, take here. What? No, rejected Hatsum voiced out. I have no time for that my babies need me. You don't have a choice in that matter. From now on until the end of the final exams you are barred from entering the workshop. Power Loader announced that shocked me as well given the numerous times he threatened her about being banned but never did follow through well until now that is. But the orders from the support companies. The orders from the other students. My babies. She asked the pale face and desperate voice was telling that this was as devastating news to her. You're not the only support course student in UA, I can work something out. 
Besides, I'm not barring you completely of the workshop, power loader side, or at least I think he did. Take this as your practical exam. You are to create inventions for the villain team of Class 1A, but your only resources would be the failed inventions you have as well as any equipment and funding Midoriya and his group can give. And why should I accept this? Look, Hatsum, you're a good kid, a genius, even you're innovative, but you're not resourceful. Take this as a lesson as well as a test. And with that, he closed the doors, leaving a rather devastated Hatsum. There was silence. I didn't know what to do given what happened, while we were prepared to offer her something to join us. Power Loader Sensei just made it quite convenient for us, but at the cost of putting Hatsum out of her comfort zone, but this is UA. The teachers here can and will put you out of your comfort zone. They put us at the worst possible position to see us overcome it. Plus Ultra that was UA motto. Hatsumes and I heard Yeyurazu called out, hesitant as she looks towards me asking in silent permission to do something. I nodded. If it could help, my quirk is creation. As long as I know what it is I can make it from my skin. Of course I need to eat to replenish my reserves. And I can ask Principal Nedzu to set us up a workshop temporarily for the exams. I also said contributing to cheering up the support student. Really, I barely heard her, it was me quite unlike her usual cheer. Can I really trust you guys for this? Yes, I didn't even see her close on us into an embrace. Thank you, thank you, I will do my best and create the most awesome baby she will ever see her cheer was back at least it was beginning to return as she excitedly jumps up and down all the while exclaiming that she would do her best. Hear that power loader sensei I will pass, no I will ace this test. She announced with renewed vigor before bolting with Yeirazu in tow. As they turned a corner I too began to made to follow only to see Power Loader Sensei peeking through the door with a grin. I bowed in thanks and made my leave. That was three down four more to go. Here's hoping the rest of this recruitment was easier than this. Zero. It was already late in the afternoon and the villain team of both class A and B had met at our testing ground, Ground Zeta. Along with us were Mei Hatsum who was busy setting up shop at her new temporary workshop and Atoshi Shinsu who was the easiest person to join us earlier with just a plain yes and no questions asked. I had found out later that Aizawa Sensei had a hand in Shinsu joining our team. He was to be transferred to class once this was all over. We were almost complete now. Just a few more students left. Midoriyasen, we are here already what are you waiting for exactly? Kendu asked curious as she stared at the gate entrance to Ground Zeta. Our trump cards. And just like that the large gates opened to reveal All Might guiding the people we have waited for. Students from the different high schools that we had known. Ketsubuki Academy's Yoshindo, Shikesu Hais and Isayurashi, Seiji Shishikura, and strangely it was their class rep Nagamasa Mora instead of that girl Kami that made their group. Asamu Hais Kashiko Sakagai, Romero Fujimi, Dadden Tadden, and finally Tsuyu's friends Habuko Mongoose. We are here All Might Boon turning into his muscle form for a smile and wave before turning back moments later. Tsuyu-chan, Habuko-chan. The two friends met and hug each other a tender moment for both of them despite the wrongness I still feel every time they do that. Yomidori I heard some call out diverting my attention away from the touching moment. I saw Shindo wave at me as he made his approach. Thanks for the invite despite being a villain I really want to see how your UA students train and this is the best opportunity for me to do so. It's nothing really. You have my thanks for accepting it. I waved it all with a thanks and smile. After all it wasn't easy playing the villain knowing that we were aiming to be heroes. M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-S-A and I heard someone shout my name and as I turned I saw Yurashi dashing towards me before making a full stop and slammed his head into the ground. Thank you very much. Raise your head Yorishis and this is too much. I really thank you too Midoriyasen for granting us this opportunity to work with you. Mora thank with his own bow a bit more reserved at the hothead student of their school. Though I apologize that Kami could not come with us I will volunteer as her replacement. No, I should be thanking you for accepting our request. I said waving my arms, it was getting a lot more embarrassing as time goes. It was disappointing that the Kami wasn't able to join but it wasn't something I haven't expected yet. You can only hope after all and with this assembly it was more than I hoped for. Midoriyasen. A new voice called me out, this time it was feminine. I turned to my attention to the lone female representative of the outside students. Keshiko Sakagai. Thank you for having us again despite what happened last time. This time she didn't formally bow much to my relief but instead nodded her head in gratitude. I will make sure that it won't happen again. No really, it's nothing. I sighed looking at each one of the people who came to help before I bowed my head. Thank you very much. Now then what are we waiting for? I imagine you have a plan the moment you called us out for help. Shindo said with a grin. I returned with my own. I do. And you might not like this. They heard it all. Read it through. It was a plan. It was savage. It was something a villain would have thought thoroughly. And right now they are the villains and this is how they would play it. All Might was worried about Bakugou more than he should be. Later that day All Might called Gran Torino and told him how thankful he is for finding Midoriya. He rather not think about him as a villain he would like to face. And, well, that was a thing. So have another I'll make from me again. 
since quite a lot found the last one nice. Amek, welcome to the Avengers Youth Initiative. I couldn't help but sigh as I trudged my way down the stairs and down the hall towards the pond where my notebook was tossed by Kakin earlier, his words echoing in my head. A dark reminder of the unfair world that I lived in and the nickname that haunt me since childhood Deku Worthless. As I came near the pond I couldn't help but notice a man just around his thirties was sitting there an all too familiar notebook in hand. As I got closer I noticed his clean black suit from the looks of it could cost more than the apartment where my family and I lived and then some. The black hair with streaks of grey on the side of goatee that surprisingly fit well with his appearance. Thought his eyes were hidden from view with an all too expensive brand of sunglasses despite being around late afternoon if the setting sun was anything to go by. As I came a few feet near him, he noticed my presence with a quirk eyebrow, closing my notebook before looking fully at my direction. When I saw his full face I instantly recognized him, a hero recognized by all around the world. His name is common as all might in circles of the community. Iron Man I couldn't help but mumble out his hero name, the most famous quirkless hero in America, and by far the most influential and richest heroes around. You must be Izuku Midoriya, he asked while gesturing the notebook in his hand which had my name on it. I could only nod, not trusting my voice to stutter in the face of such a great man. Huh, I expected someone with a larger brain. He muttered with a complete surprise in his voice. So what your quirk? Who what? I blurted out completely caught of guard by how casual he was. Super intelligence. He ignored me completely eyeing me up and down as if scanning for some sign of my non-existent quirk. Nah, you don't look the type. Um, um hyper sense. I could only sway my head in denial. Some kind of observational quirk then. Now that I have a look at you. He came closer looking deep into my eyes as if some kind of answer would be found. Nah, you don't have a special iris for those. Um, okay kid, I'm Stompo your secret. I am actually quirkless. I answered meekly, it didn't help that I stuttered for a moment. Quirkless? He asked with an incredulous look or quirk of brow. Yes, quirkless I affirmed his suspicions. You're telling me, that you he pointed at me. Made twelve notebooks worth of this he then pointed at my hobby in his hand. It's a hobby. That came out more like a question than anything. It was kinda embarrassing to openly admit such things to a hero of all people. You're telling me, your hobby is to write about heroes, deconstruct their quirks, revealing their habits and tics and hypothesizing about their weakness as well as strengths. Yes. There was a moment of silence as Tony Stark continued to eye me, I broke contact as I feel heat rising up my cheeks. This is too embarrassing. After a few more moments, he handed me back my notebook before pulling something out of his suit pocket. A datapad which he handed out to me. Do you want to be a hero? The question made me pause, looking at him in the eye, trying to search for some signs of a lie or deceit. I found none. Then it hit me. Memories of my childhood, the tears that my mother and I shed, the doctor's revelation of my quirkless nature, and the desire to hear those words. It was a no-brainer and without a hint of hesitation. I looked back in his eyes, which reflected my own my own eyes filled with resolve. Yes. He smirked before it became a grin but was soon turned with a raucous laughter. Welcome to the Avengers Youth Initiative. Class of Civil War. Hero side, Forced Alliance. Sensei, what are this munchkins doing here? Bakugu asked eyes away Sensei as he glared at the gather people outside the classroom. It had been a day since rumors spread about Class A and B's villain teams have come up with an alliance for the upcoming final exams and it was confirmed by both Midoriya and Aizawa Sensei earlier. When asked why they just revealed one of their advantages they said with great confidence that this was them declaring war. Yeah, why are we here in Class A's room? Juzo Honoku asked looking at Class 1B's teacher King Sensei with equal part curiosity and annoyance. This is earlier than expected but thanks to Midoriya's actions we had to move things a bit faster. Aizawa announced with a tired sigh. Class 1A and Class 1B hero team are to form an alliance to stop the villain team alliance or Vita. Vita, the students asked in unison a rare occurrence between class. Don't ask. But Sensei we could handle them without Class A's help Kosai Tsuburaba exclaimed earning a few nods and agreements from his class. Even with Class A there are only 12 of them. This isn't up for debate. King started. It was already planned that on the day of the practical you both would work together regardless if the villain teams are together or not. We just had to move it up ahead of time. Take this as a learning experience. In the real world, the government will on occasion assign heroes in a large-scale operations regardless of how those heroes feel about each other. A hero must set aside his pride or whatever emotions they have for the safety of civilians and fight villains. Anger against one another in a crisis is illogical and stupid. Aizawa explained while looking at the rowdier bunch of both classes. Those that don't do so would end up endangering more people. So are you going to work together or not? Guess we got no choice Honoku sighed before extending his hand. We are in your care. Fine, we are going to work with this one B brats. Bakugu conceded with a growl turning his back ignoring the extended arm. Get in. Don't mind him Kirishima assured Class B with a smile. He's always like that with all of us. Come and we are just about to start our meeting. Meeting? Yeah, Midoriya and the others are out so we got the classroom for our meeting today. We are currently planning on how to counter the Vita members' quirks. It would be great to have you guys have an input and opinions. If you'll have us. Zero. Once the students of both A and B have been seated with both Bakugu and Todoroki standing at the front. Just for the new faces' sake I'm going to say this again. 
Bakugo started with a glare. Take this seriously or get out. Don't need any munchkins who can't understand here. That had piss off Class B but they reined it in. I'll take that silence as a yes. Since Class 1B wasn't here yesterday I would like Ada to hand them the notes we made last time. Todoroki ordered earning a nod from the engine network user. With that out of the way let's get this started. We already made plans for Deku and Ponytail, who's next on the list. Ashidasen and her quirk, Acid, allows her to release acid anywhere on her body and control its properties to certain degrees. Todoroki listed looking at Ashido's UA provided documents. Yo, Jack Ears you said the pinky was developing some kind of glue how well developed is it? Bakugu asked. It's Jiru also I don't know how far it is. Me and I tend to be secretive about that since this all began. All I know is the same as the rest. She can create acid that could melt steel. TCH, that's going to be a problem when capturing her. Why not disable her or render her unconscious? Ada suggested. Unless you have a way to get close to her without get hit by acid then be my guess engine legs. Then let me do it Hagakure volunteered by the way her cloths move she was waving her hand with eagerness. Can't do that see through. Bakugo rejected. You're our scout. I'd like keep it that way. The how about you do it then? Ida asked. We can't do that either. You should know who we are after. Todoroki reasoned. Midoriya is a much more bigger target and I'd rather not divert anyone who are assigned to chase him down. Which means you engine legs, Scarface here, Birdhead, Yuraka and I can't chase others. The explosion hero continued before glaring at the other half of the room's occupants. How about you munchkins got any volunteers? Oh a girl with long wavy dark hair raised her hand. The name's Setsuna Takage and maybe I can help you with subduing Ashidasen. And what's your quirk Takagesen? It's Autotomy. It allows me to cut either my arms and legs which would regrow. The cut parts could move for a few hours before it dies and disappears. Like a lizard's tail. Kaminari asked. Something like that. She chirped with a grin. So in case her acid does hit my arms I could just cut them and replace them. How long will it take to regrow your arm Takagesen? Todoroki asked curious as to how she could do such a thing. HM depends really. If it is regrown regularly then maybe within a day but I can accelerate it but takes a toll on my stamina so I can't do it often in a fight. If Takagesen is going then I should go with her too. A new voice called out which caught the attention of both heroes at the front. It was a girl with short gray hair and bangs that cover left eye. And you are. Bakugu asked with a raised eyebrow. Ryaiko Yanagi and my quirk is poltergeist. My quirk allows me to move around object in sight but I need to see the object with both my eyes. That's quite useful in tandem with Takagesen. The half and half hero admitted looking at their leader beside him who had a contemplative look on his face. A common occurrence this past three days. You got something Bakugaukun. Yeah. He nodded before directing his gaze to the rest of the group. Change of plans bird head will go with lizard tail, ghost girl, and twinkle toe and subdue her and anyone with her. Are you sure about that Bakugousen? Todoroki just said that we can't allow a person to give chase to someone he isn't assigned to. Takoyami said curious as to why the change of mind. That's because we lack manpower to do so. Now however Bakugou pointed at the group of students from class 1b. While Deku may have gained at most 4 people, we got ourselves 16 which gives us something to work with for us to crush those bastards. Very well. It's your call. Now then who's next? Bakugou asked with a grin. Zero. It had been a few hours since they began with most of the countermeasures plan they had called it a day class B was attentive and were friendly enough despite Bakugou's mouth running from time to time as well as the uncanny nicknames he had given to people. Their meeting was drawing to a close with most people having group up to counter a specific individual or group. Finally the people handling Koda would be idiot Pikachu and Jax for years. Are there any question you munch? Yeah, I have one talk aged and raise her hand gaining the attention of everyone in the room. This has been bothering me for a while now. You called every one of us nicknames except for your Rekessen is there something we're missing here. That earned a good round of laughter from class 1A and a healthy blush from the gravity girl. Todoroki hid his smile behind his hands just to avoid the ire of the explosion hero. Don't worry about it Takagesen. Bakugu only calls a person's name if he respects him or in your Raka's case her. Hiroshima explained which triggered Bakugu into a fit of curses and rage which got ignored by class A. Oh, so they are a thing then. What was that you gender bent Deku? Bakugu roared before giving chase to the fleeing class B student. Much teasing was done. Class of Civil War. Villain sighed, the night before the war. The week rolled fast and in a blink of an eye it was the final term test. The written portion of the exam was breezed through. Without a hitch with none of us failing. Even Kaminari and Ashido got an above average score. It was what would happen next that got everyone on edge. With plans made and everything we could think of prepared it was just a matter of time for everything to come together. And that day was tomorrow. Tension are high with everyone on the edge. Dinner was an awkward affair to say the least. No one spoke and ate in silence. Once finished they would clean their own dish before heading back to their rooms. Not even one lingered around the common rooms. Either. It was worse now compared to the days before while silence prevailed most of the time there were pockets of whispers and chirps from time to time. This time was different. They all know why. I sigh as I finish up my dishes and stored them with the rest. There wasn't much left to do and I had decided to go up my room and review the plans one last time. 
It's not like sleep would come easy for me today. As I made my way up I noticed Yayurazu waiting at my door. Yamomo. I called out by her nickname that Ashido used. She didn't mind that most of us called her that. He were being most. Sorry about this Midoriya, is it a bad time? She asked with a sheepish smile. I recovered from my shock and shook my head. No it's fine. Would you like to come in? I offered with a small smile. I know it was embarrassing showing a girl my room which was filled to the brim with all my memorabilia but strangely enough I was calm in inviting her in. As I moved in to open the room and entered she followed suit. No matter how many times she entered my room since all this started I couldn't help but smile at her awestruck appearance every time she sees all my all might memorabilia. Seriously Midori I can't help but be awestruck at so much all might you have. Even after all this time. Especially all this time. I mean the sheer size of this collection and you had said before this was just some of them. Are you sure not rich? She asked with mild curiosity. I can't say I'm surprised even your Araka had asked that a few times when we have a study group in my dorm room. Not really. It's just that dad sends quite a lot of money from his work overseas. And it is just me and my mom so we do have quite some room for some spending really. I explained with a small laugh. Anyway what do you need Yamomo? Ah oh, that's right. Can we review our plans for tomorrow? It's just that. The tension is getting to you. I offered. She nodded in affirmation. It wasn't that hard to figure out given the whole situations in the dorm. I'm pretty sure everyone won't be sleeping until much later. It's okay I'm pretty sure I won't be able to sleep unless I go over everything too. With that we went over everything from beginning to the end. From our objectives, plans, traps, encounters. We talk about everything affirming what we know and what we need to do. We corrected parts that we had overlooked and did a once over. Detail after detail we scrutinized and deliberate whether or not it would work. We were stacking everything we have, pushing every advantages we could get and using them to our utmost abilities. Use the experience we have gained. The USJ. The training camp. The raid. The rescue. Everything we learned from the villains. Apply them to their best effectiveness. Show them what it means to be a real villain. Take everything we learned and used it to our fullest. Plus Ultra. Let's show them what it means to be useless. Zero. Aizawa Shouta shivered. He didn't know where it was coming from the conference room was well air-conditioned but it didn't have enough coldness to make him shiver that badly even momentarily. You okay there Aizawa? All Might asked worried for his friend and fellow teacher. You catching a cold? No, I'm fine. I'm more worried about the upcoming practicals tomorrow. What made you say that Aizawa? Principal Nedzu asked while sipping tea nonchalantly is it about the matchup? Are the leaders ill-prepared for this? No, not something like that. It's just, out with it Aizawa. Don't be shy. It's just that we might see why Izuku Midoriya would be the most fearsome villain of this generation. They thought it was a joke. What they will see tomorrow made them think otherwise. And, since this is quite short again like the previous chapter I decided to share another Amek idea from me what if Deku got a present from his dad. Crack warning you have been warned. Fate, Hero Academy, are you thy master Naya? Izuku stared at the box he just had received. He was currently in the dorm lounge just staring at the brown box that had come from his father. That surprised him the most given that most of his father's package tend to be addressed to his mom and not him directly. He had wondered what was inside but only saw a single note. Good luck dad. Ed Reed. He expected more than just that but he had no idea how to contact his father in the first place. Nor his mother who also had followed his father overseas for the summer. He looked around the empty lounge ever so thankful that majority of his friends and classmates had decided to go home over the break. The only few that did remain was himself, Todoroki who was currently at the hospital visiting his mother, Ida who was at school doing some class rep duties he needed to take care of, and finally Yayurazu who was at the training room. With a last glance around to make sure no one was around he then began to open the box. What he saw inside made him question his father's sanity even for a moment. Inside was an antique velvet box as well as another note from his father. Pulling out the velvet box out he inspected it noting no damages on the box minus the small scratches that came from the rough delivery. Midoriya. He jolted as he heard his name. Heart rate a mile a second he turned around to see Yayurazu coming out from the training room who was looking at him curiously. He sighed a breath of relief thankful it was just her. You scared me there Yayurazusan. He said while calming his racing heart. For her part she loop apologetic for the incident. Forgive me Midoriya-kun. I just didn't expect you to be here at the moment. You usually are training outside at this time. She apologized then took a seat opposite to the boy. She then notices the box on the table in front of her and guessed that this was the reason why the hero in training didn't go out. A package? Yeah, my dad sent it to me from wherever he is now. He explained with a sheepish smile before his focus went to the velvet box he just pulled out. Don't know what's in it to be honest with you. Can you show me? I'm kinda interested. She requested inching closer towards the table where the box was placed. There was a certain spark of curiosity in her eyes that made Izuku chuckle. If you're fine with it. He said as he slowly but surely lifted the box's lid. What was inside took both students' breaths away. An ornate and elegantly decorated circular antique mirror. It was one of those mirrors of divination Izuku recalled seeing one in the pictures of history books. It was beautiful as the mirror reflected the light with the only thing marring its pristine mirror was the crack that traveled across it. I didn't know you liked this kind of antiques. The creative heroine asked in surprised. 
I'm actually surprised that my father did send anything to me actually. He answered admiring the mirror in hand only to notice the note that came with the package. Gently returning the mirror, Izuku then looked at the folded note that his father included. It was a set of instructions. It was a set of instructions on how to summon a servant. Izuku wondered if his father hit his head a little too hard. What is it? Yeyurazu asked curious as to what was written on the paper. She also found it kinda cute how her friend could make such faces not that she would tell him that. I think my father had a few screw loose. What do you mean by it? This he waved the paper in his hand. Is a set of instructions that said would summon a servant. He sighed this got to be a joke. Let's try it. That made Deku pause as he looks at the only other occupant. Momo noticed the questioning look that was sent her way meant she need to explain. I mean if it's a joke then nothing would happen so there should be no harm done. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. He thought but kept it to himself glancing at the paper in hand as well as the antique box. The pleading look on her face was not something he can turn down. Zero. Are we all set? Deku called out as he finished drawing the summoning circle drawn on the paper. Yep, Yairazu chirped as she placed the mirror at the center of the circle. She then cleared the area and went to the gathered group of Ida and Todoroki who had just arrived. Ida had vehemently tried to stop whatever they were doing only to concede when his own curiosity won. Deku took a deep breath and focus. Concentrating on the mirror in the circle he began to chant. Let silver and steel be the essence. Let stone and the Archduke of Contracts be the foundation. Let rise a wall against the wind that shall fall. Let the four cardinal gates close. Let the three-fort road from the crown reaching unto the kingdom rotate. Let it be declared now. Your flesh shall serve under me, and my fate shall be with your sword. Answer, if you would submit to this will and this truth. An oath shall be sworn here. I shall attain all virtues of all of heaven. I shall have dominion over all evils of all of hell. Yet you shall serve with your eyes clouded by chaos. For you would be one caged in madness. I shall wield your chains. From the seventh heaven, attended to by three great words of power. Come forth from the ring of restraint, protector of the holy balance. And with a great blinding light something happened. Deku's hands began to throb as something began to etch itself onto his skin. His strength was falling but managed to catch himself before falling. And as the light receded they saw someone at the center of the circle. Cherry pink hair. Vibrant golden iris. A golden bell around her neck. Red kimono that it shows more skin than it should have. But most of all that they noticed was the cat-like. Features she had. Oversized paws, cat ears and a fluffy tail. I am berserker when she started looking at Izuku directly. Tell me when. Are you when master? On that day Izuku Deku Midoriya wondered if fate exists. If so then she could go die in a corner. Class is civil war. Hero side, objectives. Today was the day. That that day had prepared for. A day for the civil war. Class A's hero team had risen early to give them time to prepare and suit up. They noted that the villain team had woken up and left way earlier than them. Preparation was done mostly in silence, there was the occasional mumble and whispers but no one was overly loud or noisy even Bakugou was strangely quiet. When all said and done and everyone had gathered they left for Ground Zeta. Their battlefield. The walk towards Ground Zeta was done in silence, it wasn't awkward and for the most part calming. Halfway through Class 1A met with their counterpart Class 1B and decided to go there together. With both class now together the silence was broken and small talks and whispers were exchanged. They were all excited, none can deny that. The moment they arrived at the area they were greeted by a large number of people, some running around doing errands, others setting up equipment, and at the center of it all were their teacher. They carried forward ignoring the multiple men and women giving them looks of awe and wonder. They stopped the moment they were in front of familiar faces of UAS staff. Good morning. I see everyone has arrived early. Principal Nedzu greeted scanning over the heroes in training, quite eager to begin the test as well. Good morning Principal Nedzu they greeted in unison face set in determination and focus. The bear, mouse, some kind of mammal nodded with an excitable smile. Ah youth this is going to be a great day indeed. Nedzu spoke with a faraway gaze that made the students sweat drop and the teacher sigh. I believe introductions are in order. The principal snapped back to reality before gesturing towards the gathered adults. You are all well acquainted with our staff already but there are two people here I want to introduce to you. The bear, Mouse gestured towards two people hidden behind the faculty. This is the chief of police Kenji Tsurugami Nedzu gestured to a dogman who was wearing a very fine black suit. And his daughter cadet police officer Ami Tsurugami. The principal then gestured to girl roughly their age. She had raven black hair and snow white skin. Her cat-like eyes were hetachromatic with her left being fire red and her right ocean blue. An epitome of a Yamato Nechiko would have been the best description of her. It didn't even matter if she had cat ears and tail. A true Japanese beauty. Wei Kaminari exclaimed drawing attention to himself. He ignored it in favor of pointing between the police chief and his daughter. She's your daughter. That made them pause as the realization dawned on them. As when they turned to look at the pair in question. That's right. Woof. The police chief barked in confirmation sending the students in a confusion. She inherited my wife's quirk. Woof. Despite the answer it still felt weird in a natural way. All of them mentally decided to save it for later. After all they weren't here for such trivialities. We are here today to represent the police force for today's practical exam. Woof. The older Tsurugami started catching the students' attention. My daughter here will lead a group of police cadets that would go with you during the exam. 
Why are we hearing this now? He'd have voiced out what all of them had thought. Just like in the real world, the police and servicemen will provide support for you during times of crisis. I will explain more once we are settled and can begin our briefing. Eraser had answered lazily before pointing at an ensemble chairs and podium behind the adults. They complied. After a few moments of people shuffling around and finding an open seat the briefing began. Good, everyone is here. Eraser had started looking the gathered cadet police and heroes in training. Today we will be conducting a joint simulation between UA and the police academy. This is also being the final exams for this semester for both schools. There was a bright flash as a screen came to life on it was the familiar face of UA students. This are the villains you will all be detaining. Details about them will be handled by the heroes in training. Ada observed the screen with rapt attention. True enough they were their classmates and schoolmates all lined up in their mugshots. What he notices however was that almost all of them had a different costume on. He wanted to ask but was cut short when their teachers continued on and the screen switched to another scene. Ground Zeta. This is Ground Zeta. Your battlefield for today. Here. The racer had click a button highlighting three separate buildings. A circular building nearest to the marked entrance. A tower with a direct line of sight on the entrance located at the far end and finally a large bank near the edges of the projected map. These three buildings will be your objectives. Another click and the screen zoomed in on the nearest location. The dome structure. This is Zeta Botanical Garden a botanical garden as well as a research facility that focus on biochemical hazards. There were screenshots of the interior and exterior was shown, most of them were empty and devoid of human life. Except for one. There was an image, a group photo of researchers behind them was the front of the garden. These people are the researchers of the garden. They are currently being held hostages at the moment by villains. Your objectives are to rescue these people and find out what those villains are after. Sensei Ida called out with a raised hand. Are these people normal civilians? Good question, Yadakon. Midnight responded. These people are HUCs. You all are well aware who they are so there is no need to explain it. Keep this in mind that all civilians within the zone are HUKs and will evaluate you on your performance. They will help us determine your overall score. Thank you, Midnight. The racer head lazily said, nodding his head towards the rated R heroine. As heroes as well as public servants these civilians are your main priority regardless of the situation. He glared at the more violent heroes in training. They averted their eyes. It is not the capture of villains or stopping what plans they have but the safety and security of the common people. He coughs returning his attention to the screen which had been replaced with another layout of a different building. It was the tower. This is Zeta Tower. At the top of this tower lies an engineering lab as well as its owner, Mehatsum. This is your next objective. Save her. It was straight to the point. They noted but there was something in their guts that said there was more to this than just saving her but they couldn't tell what it was. So they kept quiet. Finally Eraser had showed the last of the three highlighted buildings. Zeta Bank. Villains have occupied it and are currently holding multiple hostages. Save them without damaging the infrastructure and secure the area. And capture their leader. That is all. Eraser had bowed and made way for the principal who looked them once over before starting his own piece. As you all know this is just a simulation but I want you all to treat this as the real thing. There are real dangers involved and real people that will and can be harmed if you fail. So please as heroes, save them. That is all. It was rare that Principal Nedzu didn't rant. More surprisingly after saying his piece he nodded and hopped out the podium. Todoroki will now explain the plan once more. Zero. Do you think their plan would work? The racer had asked the gathered staff of both schools inside the observation room. All eyes watching the multiple screens streaming the entire zone. A test had begun and the students had just entered the tunnel leading into the zone itself. Their plan was well thought out. Detailed even. I commend them that they were able to take account the possibility of police cadets. Woof. The chief of police commented as he watches her daughter ran alongside Bakugu. Sadly like all plans, the heroes had just arrived at the other end of the tunnel. They stopped dead in their tracks. The scene was magnified. They could make out the surprised and dumbfounded looks the hero team and the police cadets had on their faces. Who wouldn't? After all right in front of them, clad in a simple white long sleeve polo shirt and silk vest, plain black slacks and leather shoes was villain. Not just any villain. It was the villain. Izuku Deku Midoriya. It won't survive first contact. Woof. With an awkward smile and wave the entire plan meticulously prepared by the hero shattered. And all hell broke loose. Class of civil war. Villain side. Delay. I was watched as the HUC situate themselves around the botanical garden when I heard the echoing sounds of the bell. A warning that there was only five minutes before the exam begins. Five minutes for us to ready up. Sunny one of the older HUC called out. Don't mind us, we are just about ready. Now go. I smiled and bowed before heading my own way. I passed by other members of the HUCs each one giving a smile or a wave or the occasional good luck. It was weird really. Here I am playing the villain and people are cheering for me. Surreal even. I shook my head banishing the weird thought before I devolve into a senseless mutter. I decided to do a final check on everyone. I pulled out a small earpiece created by none other than Hatsum and Yeyurazu. It was specially designed for our use for this day. Is everyone ready? I called out through the radio static. It took a moment but soon enough someone replied. Remind me class of why must I work with this side character. Monoma's voice cackled over the radio. 
What was that you pompous brat? Another voice said over the frequency. It belongs to Shinketsu Shishikura. Your attitude is rather grating for a student of UA. I sometimes wondered if putting those two together was a good idea. We're fine here. Ignore this too. A new voice assured me. Shinso was calm as ever despite having to reign in the more unpleasant bunch. I really am thankful for him. Mina here. Kuda and I are fine Ashidas and chirp excitedly. Suyu and Mongustin are ready Kiro. And one by one they replied through the earpieces notifying that they're already except for one. This is Yeyurazu. We got a problem. That can't be good. Yeyurazu what is it? I replied over the radio. We need more time to set up the entrance. The traps aren't fully set yet. That was bad. Really bad. How much time do you need? I asked, mind already a mile a minute thinking for some kind of distraction to delay and impede Kakin's advances. After all we need those traps for the plan to start successfully. Three more. I hear her reply. I gritted my teeth the five minutes bell had rung a good three minutes ago. Which means I need a plan to stop them for a solid minute. I had no idea how to buy that much time. Facing every one of them would be suicide. I can't delay them alone. Neither can I show our hand so early lest they realize something. I need someone to back me up and not show himself. Then I realize something. A memory from almost a week ago. One of the many new babies Hatsum conceived. I'll buy enough time. I called out before activating full cowl and sprinted towards the entrance way. I barely heard her acknowledgement with the winds blowing by my ears. Hatsum I called out. Is it ready? There was a moment of silence. There was no reply on the other end and for a moment I thought the worst. Yep, this baby is ready Hatsum chirp. I breathe easily enough and turn to the matter at hand. Then can you back me up? I asked as I saw the entrance in view. I'll try my best. She responded. Then have Sekigason help you coordinate. Roger. I breathe easy as I final made the final stretch. I began powering down full cowl as I neared and saw a familiar face. Yodeku Yoshinda waved. Shindasan what are you doing here? I asked surprised by his presence. I heard over the radio that there was a delay in the setup so I came here to try and help you buy time. He answered. You don't have to. I waved him off in a panic. I need you and the rest to be out of sight. We can't have them know that we have some help. But, please Shindasan. I beg. Trust me. I pleaded again looking at him in the eye. A moment later he sighed and conceded. Fine. But if you get in trouble I'll come running. I nodded before he began to run back and hid himself among the buildings. The moment he wouldn't be able to see me I sighed trying to compose myself as I hear the speakers announcing the exams is about to start in a minute. I closed my eyes and even my breathing. Then I remembered the things Hatsum gave me. My weapons. I pulled the modified sunglasses. This baby here is your HUD helps you keep track of everything just for you Boskan of course there's something for your femme fatale. She teased. Her knowing grin didn't help fight off the growing blush on our face. This also has retroactive lenses for those pesky flashes that could blind you. I pulled my knife. Midoriya-kun, this knife is designed by yours truly and is made of hard plastic and lace with enough sedative and anesthesia to knock you out for a few hours with just a scratch. She informed with a wide smile. Each of us will be equipped with this knife. Of course you get more than one. Then I remembered something from Yeyarazu earlier today. I unconsciously touched the matryoshka doll flash bangs and smiled. Midori Kanye Yurazu called out. I turned to look back at her as she approached. What is it Yeyamamasen? Here. She handed me a handful of Yeyurazu like dolls. I remember them back during her exam with Aizawa Sensei. I know that this will be helpful for you. She smiled. It was too bright that outshined the rising sun. I couldn't help but admire her. I truly am grateful to the people around. Memories cut short as the countdown began. Eyes focus as I activated the HUD sunglasses displaying all the information around me. Breath in. Breath out. Am I ready? Yes. I am ready. Countdown one minute. I whispered and a timer appeared on the corner of the HUD. It was frozen on the minute mark. I heard the sounds of feet running. They were coming. I need to delay them. Just one minute. I only need to delay them for one minute. Start. They arrived. They saw me. They paused. I smiled and waved. Before I became a blur once more. Zero. I moved before anyone could react. I had to. Don't give them chance to move or else I would be the one done in. After all I'm fighting this one versus 78. With the initiative seized I made to take down one of the most dangerous hero among the group. Kakan. 15% that's the most I could draw one for all. That 15% was enough to wreck a car with a single punch so I had to hold back against human opponents out of fear and safety for others. Kakan knows this and I know that he told everyone about this but there is a difference between knowing and seeing. And right now, they are seeing me at my top for the first time. With a flourish I brandished my knife with ease. It was currently serving as both my weapon and safety net. A safety net to allow me to use my power at its currently limit without extreme injury to my foe. It was blunted enough that it won't cut anyone too seriously but enough that I could nick them which would let the anesthetic to do its job to render them asleep and out of the fight. In an instant I was behind Kakan, knife at the ready and his back exposed. None of them had yet to move. Good. And with a clean swipe he was down. Or would have if he had not taken a step away. He was barely outside of my reach. Truly Kakan was amazing to be able to move like that. His instincts is something I sorely lack. I heard him growl before he turned facing me but was already too late. 
I was already on the move to keep my distance, and like that everything began to move. The exchange only took two seconds. I had to buy 58 more. The EKU Kakin roared an explosion propelling him forward. To anyone it would seem reckless, to me it was calculated. After all behind him on a follow-up with Sadu and Kirishima and even behind them was a jet of ice courtesy of Todoroki. I would have made to move, key word was would have if it weren't for the distinct click I heard over the radio. I couldn't help but smirk. When for all, the quirk to pass on stockpiled power to its next user. Power was broad description, strength, speed, agility, and many more physical aspects could be called power but it wasn't just limited to those. It also includes the mental aspects as well as the senses, faster thought process, wisdom and knowledge are also power, keen sense was also power. Which means they are also stockpiled and passed on. Which means I hold 9 generations worth of it. It was only when I was able to use 10% that I had begun to notice this fact when I could hear whispers a good distance away when I was using full cow. I also had faster thought process when I was doing of the many practical exercises. I had to ask All Might and apparently this was the case when he to unlock a certain percent of one for all. It differs from user to user while super strength comes first every time. The other abilities of the quirk come next depending on the user and how much he could access. Apparently I had heightened senses as well as accelerated thought process. It was only a matter of time when I gained the rest, All Might said. But right here, right now, those were enough. I heard the bang before Kakin saw the flash of light and my smirk turned into a grin. I saw it in slow motion. His reaction to the flash of light as well as the near instantaneous decision to use his quirk to put some distance between him as well as shoving both Sadu and Kirishima to the side leaving me to deal with the ice coming my way with ease in a single punch. The bullet missed Kakin but didn't miss something else. It won't miss. After all, having both Hatsum and Sekigai coordinating their quirks makes it so it is impossible to miss. A sniper rifle loaded with smart bullets that was the invention they came up to help suppress the heroes at long range. With Hatsum's quirk zoom and Sekigai's sensory it was the most effective tactic to use. Hatsum aims, Sekigai directs the bullet path. The city speaker blared catching everyone's attention as I saw a police cadet falling down, asleep. And like dominoes everything began to fall. Sniper someone, one of the police cadets screamed in panic. A chain reaction among their ranks happened as they began to dive for cover. It proven fruitless as three more shots rang, three more fell. Kakin scowled and made to charge only to step back as another bullet whizzed past missing him but hitting another cadet, another one down. A few moments later the fast-acting Todoroki was able to put a wall of ice but not before another person had been taken down. Six cadets down in a span of twenty seconds. The moment the ice wall covered them I let a small breath of relief. Thanks you Hatsum. No problem Deku she exclaimed. Got to say this baby here is a beauty I smiled before addressing the current situation. Tiamomo is it ready. Just a bit I heard some rustling from the radio before something click. There it's ready Deku. Good. Clear the area Yamomo. I said before pulling out some of the matryoshka dolls she had handed to me earlier. Shindo get ready. Roger. I heard them before I charged headstrong towards the wall. I knew well it was a trap after all it was them, I expected it. Welcomed it. Ready for it. The moment my fist connected with the wall it exploded into shard of ice, wind pressure blowing it towards the gathered heroes and police cadets. I saw them already prepared for my attack. I saw Ida's engine ready fire. Beside him was Takoyami's dark shadow already charging, and Jiru's ear jack aimed at me. What they didn't expect was the dolls I had tossed the moment I broke through. And a moment later a flash of light that rivaled the sun shined. And in that moment, in a single swipe of my knife, two heroes fell. <laughs> the instant effect of the blade's drugs work as intended catching the unconscious form of Aida and Takoyami before pulling out of range from the rest of the heroes, and the trap. Now I called out, catching the stunned heroes off guard and the ground shook with force. The earth they stood gave way in an instant. Some tried to get away from the collapsing floor but was met with the side buildings exploding towards them trap and the only way was down. The last thing I saw was the rage-filled face of Kakin, and heard the echoing roar as the abyss consumed them all. I look up and saw the other people rendered unconscious from the bullets all string up with tape courtesy of Ciro and his quirk. A relief that everything went according to plan even with the slight delay. I sighed in relief as the power of one for all receded. As I looked back down in the abyss I couldn't help but grin. Good luck. Class of Civil War. Villain side 7.5, Prelude to Anima. I stood still guard up as I watched the dust began to settle. I had to make sure, make sure that every one of them fell. I wasn't alone thankfully, Yeyurazu was by my side ready to lend aid at a moment's notice, and there was Siro and Minda as well, both had the unconscious bodies of our classmates and the police cadets hanging safely on a line of Siro's tape. It was a safety precaution even with the soft land they once stood, the two fallen building made of foam as well as the waiting cushion down below I couldn't guarantee their safety in their current state. After all they're paralyzed as well as asleep. As the last speck of dust settled and there was no sign of your rock as zero gravity or any form or figure emerging from the gaping hole. I finally let out a sigh of relief and allowed to slump backwards landing on my ass. It worked. I muttered with a smile. I couldn't believe it worked. Yeah but that was cutting it close really. Ciro said as he gathered the sleeping and eliminated students before handing them to a group of medical robots who will cart them to recovery girl for some healing. 
We barely pulled it off, Sir Yeyurazu exclaimed. What? It's true I mean if we were a minute late who knows what could actually happen. Zero reason Midoriya would have been caught or eliminated. Or worst, but it didn't happen. I said with confidence, turning to look at the at Zero. He wasn't wearing his hero costume. Then again none of us are. We are villains now. No need to be flashy and colorful. Like all villains our costumes are designed to be practical and plain. Easy to blend in with the civilians without suspicion. And let's make sure it won't happen. Well said Deku Siro grinned at me before turning his attention to our shortest member. Come on Minda we got to finish setting up on other parts as well. Yeah, yeah. Minda looked at my direction and Yeyurazus and in that rare moment he nodded and never once uttered a perverted joke before they left. That took me completely by surprise. Did Minda not do anything perverted? Yeyurazu asked beside me. Apparently I wasn't the only one that was surprised. I couldn't help but chuckle. Is being serious right now. I said as I approached the ledge of the hole. Peering down all I could see was total darkness not even a glimpse of light or shine. Even with Ayama among them I couldn't see anything but pure black. And we should be too. I turned around knowing that no one would be coming through the hole anytime soon. I turned on the earpiece. They're coming your way. I leave the rest to you. Mina. Koda. Roger that boss man. Mina's voice chirp happily through the comms. I could even imagine her smiling wildly just by the sound of it. Leave it to Alien Queen and Taylor. Taylor. Alien Queen I understand but Taylor was really out on the left field. I would have questioned it but given that this was Mina I had to concede since I was sure it's referring to some kind of obscure pop culture or something. Be careful. That all I wanted to say before cutting the comms off. They already know what to do from here. 